Good afternoon, brethren, sisters, saints of the Church of the Living God. I was, it's, it's windier than... <laughs> it's windy and uh, that's okay, never mind. You. You. Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Privately, I will speak to you, um, but praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You don't know just what a blessing. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't going to be a deep video, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but um, I, I, I can't remain silent about this disgusting day. Halloween. One of Satan's biggest holidays. One of. It's not the biggest. It's not the biggest. No. No. It's not. But, um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me at the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Uh, this is not going to be extraordinarily deep. But, see, around here, th this, the scriptures, the authorized version, this is what we're about around here. Okay, uh, we here are all about um, what God hath said. Okay, we here are about the authorized version of the scriptures that glorify our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, that point unto Him. Okay, that's what we're about here. So when you guys send me those emails with, uh, you're just reading scripture. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You're, you're, amen. Amen. You're right. You're right. They're, they're brilliant. Genius. Yeah, there you go. Yes. That's what, that's what we're about here. See, because the authorized version of the scriptures points to the God who is. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who is God the Father. Okay? So, yes. That's, that's, this is what we're about. The authorized version. Absolutely. And um, anyway, get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me. Look for where? Verse by verse. Read along with me because unlike so many of these other uh, YouTube preachers, you know, these King James Bible believing Christians who are who who portray themselves as perfect and errant. And have cult followings and all the like. Not just the one you're thinking of, but many of these other people. Okay? Um, I'm like them. I'm, I'm like you in a way. How so? I, I'm addressing saints. I'm just a man. I'm fallible. I make mistakes. Okay? And there are actually more than a few witnesses now. See, you know the one that you're seeing right here? This, this, that, this is the one that you will meet outside if you ever show up. <laughs> okay? I know the one brother who went to um, visit his daughter, praise the Lord for that. Um, he went through Illinois and I didn't get his message in time. So, oh! You know, and I texted you back, brother, if you see this. Our, you, our door is open for the brethren. Okay? Our brethren, you, you know, those of you who we, you know, our door is open to you. It is open to you. But see, the one you see here is the one that you're going to get. Okay? I don't put on a facade to perform for you. God forbid. Okay? So, read along with me. I make mistakes. Okay, I stumble and bumble sometimes. 
Okay, this my mouth goes quicker than my brain more often than not. And brethren, call me on it. Okay, so read along with me. Okay, read along with me. You know, before we begin, <laughs> I, 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 I am never, I, it doesn't cease to amaze me. The depths of depravity of Christianity that they will go to to justify themselves. All things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient. There are these Christians, and I'm not a Christian, there are these Christians that hide behind that and do what is contrary to Scripture and justify it in that way. Well, all things lawful for me. And that, that is undeniable fact and truth. All things are lawful unto us. What does that mean? You and I as saints, we can commit any sin that a lost person does. We can. But see, the consequence of that for true saints is going to be dire. And if you keep messing around, sooner or later the Lord is going to get you out of the way. What a shame. What a stigma. What a shame to live with for all eternity. Imagine being in heaven, which is far better than being in hell. But imagine being in heaven for eternity with the one who you are you want to adore is ashamed of you for all eternity because you wouldn't conform yourself to what he said but all things were lawful for you it it, it doesn't cease to amaze me the depths that Christians will go to to justify themselves. Oh, you'll you see this for uh, the great example of this is Christ's Mass, one of the most offensive, anti-Christ, satanic, pagan Roman Catholic holidays, and it is that day which is the most important unto Satan. Yes, brother, I do believe that that man of sin and the, you know, the Christians that get left behind, they'll find this out themselves. I do believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, that uh, that day, the 25th, is going to play big time in his scheme of things. Whether it's his birthday, whether it's the day he shows up, who knows? But, yeah. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about this one. Halloween. Halloween. See, here's the thing. You got to remember some things about Satan. You got to remember some things about Satan. Okay? Go to Ezekiel 28. Okay? Go to Ezekiel 28. Saints, you know this. This really isn't aimed at you, saints, because we know this. And, you know, most Christians aren't saints. They're not saved anyway. But for us saved people, we got to remember this. you got to remember this about Satan. Okay? Ezekiel 28. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Ezekiel 28, 14 on to verse 17. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou hast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst, midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. So Satan, or I should say Lucifer, the anointed cherub. Now Lucifer does not uh, appear in this text, but uh, Lucifer... Son of the morning, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, Lucifer means son of the morning, N not morning star, you wicked Christian. Okay? All right. But he was perfect. Perfect. Till a Nick. 
iniquity was found in thee. Mm. And if you were to read verse 13, how uh, Lucifer was covered in all these precious stones, beautiful. Be visual stimuli. Visually stunning. You know, um, Hollywood and a lot of other uh, resources ra other than Hollywood want you to make want you to believe that Satan is this you know and you see a lot of this with these ghost videos that are just totally fake a lot of them are with that <laughs> again I gotta mention this that that ring girl with the long hair and uh, these ghostly faces yes a devil could do that but it's like come on man they, they, I mean come on come on that, that's so fake that's so fake but the point is they want to present to you a picture of Satan, Lucifer, being this grotesquely ugly thing. Now, sin, of course, is disgusting and atrocious. Yes, unless you're a free gracer, of course. Then it's a glorious thing to the free gracer. Then they, they ain't saved. But, uh -huh, see, I got to kick you at least once every video, scum. Anyway, Satan wants you to, it's, it's a weird thing. He wants people to be informed of something that he is not. This grotesque and hideous thing. But in reality, he is one of the most beautiful creations he's, God has ever created. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. The sin of Satan was pride. He got, he got, he got, uh, he was on his high horse. Like so many of these YouTube preacher guys. They're on their high horse. They think they're better than everybody. Okay? I mean, most of them, you know, most of these guys, they think that. Some are better about not shoving it in your face. But, you know, it seems with longevity, a lot of these guys like to do that and shove it in your face. Ugh. Makes me want to vomit. But Satan was full of pride. Satan is full of pride. Okay? Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Now wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and apart from evil is understanding. Wisdom is the foundation for understanding and knowledge. Okay? All right, there are two wisdoms. We've talked about this before. There is one that comes from heaven, and there is one that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Of the earth, dirt, led of the senses of the devil. Okay? Taken with a superficial beauty. That's why sin looks so attractive to you. Why sin is so attractive? It looks beautiful. All those precious stones. It's that red button theory thing again that we've talked about before. Okay? Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Sooner or later... At the great white throne of judgment. Hmm. Uh, well, Satan gets cast into that before the great white throne of judgment. Oh, yeah, that's right. Book of Revelation isn't chronological. <laughs> oh, wicked heretic. Anyway. 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 Now, of course, saints, Isaiah 14. And we're going to stay in Isaiah for a little bit. Isaiah, no, what was it? It's Isaiah, yeah. Isaiah 14, verses 12 on verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? That's what Lucifer means, not morning star. 
How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Satan was so engulfed with himself, so enamored with himself, so in love with himself, that he wants to be God. He wants to be God. And the world, for judgment's sake, has been given unto Satan. Now, once the body of Christ is taken out of the way, uh, with nothing to hinder him, then Satan will have a complete and uh, un, uh, unadulterated and unhindered reign on earth. Uh, he's allowed today to have, be in an authority, but see, the body of Christ is on the earth, hindering, letting him. Let means to hinder scripturally. Okay, Letting him from fulfilling the majority of his things. Once we get out of the way and that man of sin, the son of perdition, get revealed. Hey, 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 spunky britches. Keep reading 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Don't just stop at verse 4, whatever, verse 5. Reading. Keep reading. Okay? They're genius. Okay? Well, the Greek, you, you go on someplace. Yea, hath God said, liar. Anyway, Satan wants to be God. And Satan has imparted to those his children this. Uh, Genesis 3, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Man in and of himself cannot truly know what is truly good or what is truly evil. The only way that is possible if we have a perfect standard to judge upon ourselves first, yes, and then others. See, I, ju I, I judge myself every day by this. Therefore, I have every right to judge you by this same, same standard. And see, only devils are the ones who say, don't judge me, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. You're right. Here, here's his judgment. I judge myself first every day. Hence, I get to judge you every day. Why? Because I see I, I start here and then I go to you. Why? Because this is my standard. Okay? Any of you, any of you, listen to me. You hear a Christian justifying themselves? Don't judge me. Those are statements of lost people. Lost people say that kind of stuff. Lost people don't like to take responsibility for their actions. Lost people will constantly pass the buck. Now, saints could do that. But there comes a point where that stops with us. Sooner or later. Because there's nothing else we could do. What are we going to do? Okay, we're, you know, <laughs> we got the Father within us. Okay, what are we going to do? Okay? I have been told... I, 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 and brother, I got to share this because it's so pertinent and meet to what with this little thing that we're doing here today. A dear brother of ours, I just to let you know, I have encountered some some uh, pretty <laughs> wonderful arguments from Christians. Atheists, you can expect certain things from them. Okay? And by the way, you're not an atheist. Okay? We just read Satan wants to be God. And when you think that you know what is good and what is evil, more so than God the Father who created you, you don't want to accept that he created you? That's your problem. Okay, that's, that's, that is your problem. See, when you act as you are the deciding factor of what is good and what is evil, you decide. See, God tells us what is good and what is evil. But see, the atheists, so-called, they claim they don't, they don't believe in the big G God, our Father, Jesus Christ. 
They believe in themselves. They are their own gods. This is why, brethren, I always tell you, whenever you encounter an atheist, you throw that right at them. Watch them squirm. I watch them backpedal and watch them put up the dukes. Okay? I watch them disregard. Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's, you know, one thing you lack. That's the finger there. Atheist. You do believe in a deity. Yourself. There is no such thing as an atheist. In John 8, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning in the Garden of Eden, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Comes up with a of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So right there, when you are acting as your own standard for what is good and what is evil, you are your own standard of judgment. You are of your father the devil. You are your own God. And see, with Christians who go into this grotesque thing of justification, justifying themselves. The, and, and, brother, I love you. Stop with the excuses. Stop. 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 Whoever you are, sister, brother, stop with the excuses. Or the Lord will stop you. It's a very real possibility. But a brother of ours told the story, and, and if I'm I don't remember the entire gist of it, but I remember the point. And our brother Alexander B. Hartley um, has encountered this thing, which I'm about to share with you. Uh, I've encountered some pretty wonderful things from Christians. Some things that just like, what did you did you really just say? You did. What's worse, you really believe that? I've encountered some really crazy things from Christians. You know, you expect off the wall nonsensical stuff from self theists, okay? Um, and you also you can also expect certain things from other people, such as. Why is God so, you know, how am I supposed to love someone I'm afraid of? Did you grow up with a father or a mother? Huh? You were afraid to make them angry because of a punishment or a grounding or taking something away, right? But yet you loved your father and mother? <laughs> okay, that, that, not rocket, sci rocket science there. Okay, and plus man has free will, okay? All right. That, see, that kind of stuff, we as saints, we can expect that from, the, like, the self-theists and the professed whatever. It's when you run into these Christians who use the same arguments. That, and when they come up with stuff, like, okay, Halloween is the celebration of death. Halloween is the celebration of death. Okay? Proverbs, uh, what is that? Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8, <laughs> uh, verses 33, no, verses 32 on to verse 36. Hear instruction and be wise, wise, wisdom, fearing the Lord, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Romans 6. All they that hate me love death. Romans 6. For the wages of... Uh, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I dear brother one time encountered a Christian. He's not a Christian either. He's a saint. 
um, where the conversation came up about this disgusting holiday today, uh, Halloween. Okay, and uh, our brother, who is who is uh, versed in scripture, uh, brought up the thing about you know all they all they that uh, hate me love death, and he was speaking unto a female Christian, and this woman said. Well, we celebrate the death of Jesus. <laughs> I'm not yet that. Yeah, that's. The, the, I, I didn't go through that. Uh, I, I, I've, I've encountered some pretty stupid things from Christians. I have not encountered something like that. That I mean, I've, I've, I've had things that have come close that, like, I'll just stand there for a minute and it'll like I become dumbfounded. It's like, wow, you, <laughs> and I'm left speechless. It's like, wow, wow, you're pretty stupid for <laughs> thinking that. <laughs> you really are. Well, we celebrate the death of Jesus. She said that for what? To justify you Christians doing the Halloween thing. And I and I and I talked with our brother about this. It's like, you know, um, I wonder how I would have reacted to that. And he even says, like, I don't like to have seen how you would have reacted. And I don't know. Uh, I I really don't know. I I mean, <laughs> I mean, how how do you react to something like that? How do you react to someone who is so warped and deranged in their thinking? To justify Halloween by uttering the brilliant statement, well, we celebrate the death of Jesus. How can you respond to that? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, kind of, like, kind of like a casting a pearl before a swine kind of thing. You know, it's like, well, how, how would you? I, I, I mean, like I said, I've never encountered anything that horrific. I, I've come close, okay? I've come pretty close. You know, I have. Uh, the most recent one, like this year, that I can remember offhand was, you know, a black Hebrew Israelite. You know, they, they you know, they get pretty crazy. But that, that one was pretty, you know, it was like, wow. Wow. Wow, all things are lawful for you. Hmm? And see, what, what always is so humorous to me, okay, see, the reason why Halloween isn't Satan's biggest day. See, Christianity wants you to think, it's obvious, isn't it? You have even these pond scum free gracers, not, well, I don't know if any of them are, but just to make an example, there, are, I'm sure there are some of them at least for the facade will be against Halloween, okay, because it's glorifying the devil, right? It's obvious. It's obvious about Halloween. I mean, it's known all Hallow's Eve, you know, dressing up in costumes to ward off evil spirits, apparently, <laughs> okay? It's, it's, it's brazenly obvious. But see, remember, Satan wants to be God. So, in wanting to be God, a day that worships the false god, you know, the, the middle person of the three-person trinity, when the day that they claim he was birthed, hmm. See, Satan wants you to believe that, the, and, then, and Halloween is a day glorifying evil, death, and Satan. Yes, it is. But that's not his most important biggest day. It's Christ's Mass because it's religious. It looks good. And you even got people defending and causing rifts among the body of Christ because all things are lawful for them. And they refuse to accept the truth that it is a pagan Roman Catholic holiday, not sanctified by Scripture. The holy days in Scripture are given to us. They are the Hebraic Jewish holy days, not the man-made ones, okay? Halloween is obvious. 
But see, there again, you got the Christians, all things are lawful for you, justify themselves. Isaiah 3, 9 and 11. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin of Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. And the only place there, a real quick reference, Jeremiah 8, verse 12. And this, this, is, dude, this, this, is, this is going on right now as you, as you and I speak. <laughs> okay, this is happening daily. Daily, okay. Um, you listen to some of these free gracers, man. I, 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 it's disgusting. I can't stomach it anymore. I really don't listen. I don't. Every once in a while I'll check. What? Because someone will send me something. But anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. They declare their sin of Sodom. They hide it not. All things are lawful for me. We're not in the law, but under grace. Therefore, let's sin. Uh, let's sin that grace may abound. That's what they, that's what the free grace teaches. Come on there, sweetie pie. That's what you guys, your underlying thing that you teach. Yes. Yes, it is. Who's the liar there, sweetie pie? Uh, you. <laughs> All right. Yes, the shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Jeremiah 8, verse 12. Were they ashamed when they had committed an abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Back in Ezekiel 3. Woe unto the wicked, uh, verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings different dispensation, instruction, and righteousness. Just because the world is going to hell in a handbasket, that don't mean that we do. We're in the world. We're not of the world. Christianity is of the world. Because the worldly were the ones who introduced the term Christian. Yes, Christian appears three times. Okay? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And y'all harp on 1 Peter 4. And the context of that shows you that the term Christian is not a good thing. Because remember, Catholics are Christians. <laughs> Stupid. But, verse 11. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. Mm. Of course, Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. 20 under 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. It's cute. It's wholesome. It's, it's good for their childhood. For the kids to dress up like ghosts and devils and monsters and uh, gods, little false gods and go trick or treat for candy. and Oh yeah, it's real. No, it's evil. It's evil. Just like putting up a pine tree in your house for a certain day of the month in December that glorifies Satan. But we won't talk about that today. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Sweet for bitter. That's not candy today. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye shall do. Your eyes are opened, and ye, you, shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Which justify the wicked for reward. What's the reward you get? Praises of men? Come out a specific shrewd, good business move time to uplift the satanic Roman Catholic holiday and then sell a book. 
that was a very good, shrewd business move. That was very lucrative, I'm sure. <laughs> More power to you there, pal. Anyway, which justify the wicked for reward. What's the ultimate reward? You get to do what you want. You can justify sin and make yourself feel good. Hey, just believe and receive. Hey, that's why you go to the free gracers, man. Oh, there's some of these disgusting, vile people, you know, just listening to them talk, just blatantly cursing and stuff like that, you know. And, I mean, they're disgusting. They're disgusting. They really are. But hey, you can go to them, man. And, and within that theology of free grace, <laughs> you can find a justification for anything. Just kind of like the constitutions of the Jesuit order. Which I'd love to have a copy of that in English. I found one for Latin, in Latin. And I'm not going to learn Latin to read something from the Jesuits. You crazy? Besides, if i got to pay over 500 bucks for a book, I, I'm going to get me... I'm not going to do this, of course. But I, I'm going to get me like a, the Cadillac Cambridge or the uh, Cadillac Allen or whatever, man. I, I, it's going to be... That's going to be, uh, that thing, the leather is going to moo. I want to touch it. It's going to moo. You know, cow leather and, and stuff like that. That's an investment, you know. But, yeah, I'd love to get that to just, you know. Anyway, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. How do they take it away? By keeping them in bondage to sin. Doesn't it seem strange to you that Christianity will find a justification for anything? And they, and they hide behind all things are lawful for me. And that cannot be denied. That, can't, that is absolute truth. Yes, you can go and do the stuff that's for today. You can put up an abomination in your house and, and put a little baby head, oh, excuse me, little dangling ornaments on it. Go you can do that. Does it edify? Oh, it edifies you. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him? See, you can do that. But see, there's going to be a consequence. There's always a con You know, that's science. Action, reaction. Okay, that's science. Okay? Doesn't that bother you? Well, no, because why? Because you're your own idol. You're your own God. You're making yourself feel good because you're justifying it. And you refuse to hear the truth. Because a, because a Ruckmanite said so. Yeah, and that was a deliberate uh, smack at the one. Yes, it was. Yes, he started it. <laughs> James Foe. James Foe. Not Peter. James 4. Verses 4 and 5. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Hmm. Know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Hmm. The spirit that... Look at that verse. The spirit, lowercase s, that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. Hold your place there and go to Ephesians chapter 1. I want to show you something. Okay? I want to show you something. Ephesians, not Timothy. Ephesians chapter 1. Come on, fingers work with me. This set of scriptures is really, really well wore in now. Verse 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy capital S, spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Okay? And where is that? In uh, Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the holy, capital S, Spirit of God. See, saints have the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is that capital S Spirit dwelling within us. We have the Father dwelling within us. And when you look at James 4, verse 5, look at that S there. And that's very significant. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the lowercase s spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? The spirit of man, the lowercase s spirit, because of Adam and Eve. But see, we are accountable for our own actions. You can't say, well, it's their fault. No, 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 no. No one holds a gun to your head forcing you to do anything. you got to remember that. Okay? So, the spirit that is in unregenerate man lusteth to envy. Okay? Now, sin, according to Scripture, is relegated to this, the sin suit. Okay? Plenty of Scriptures are showing you that. Okay, Romans 8 specifically, which devils don't like that, of course, because they're Catholic. They like to eat uh, flesh cookies, apparently. Okay? So, when you are going contrary to Scripture to justify something that has nothing to do with the God who is, you're an enemy of God. Why? Because you're making friends with the world. You're making friends with the world there, Christian, when you're doing your little Halloween thing today. Hey, Christian, guess what? Oh, I'm going to say it. You're, uh, you're friends with the world on December 25th. Because even lost people celebrate. Well, we celebrate it for the, the right reasons. No, you don't. You celebrate it because you want to, because you're your own God, and you want to ignore the facts that it is a pagan creation. It is created by man, and it is contrary to Scripture. You don't want to accept that, because all things are lawful for you. Yeah, that, that's, that's the fact. If some of these dudes would at least have the stones to publicly say, you're right. It's a man-made holiday. It's not approved of God. But I'm going to do it anyway because all things are lawful for me. I would shut up and never mention it again. I would. <laughs> I mean, I, would, I might make a little passing reference here and there, but I mean, if certain people, you know, not just the one, but several of them would at least, at least, come on, if they would at least say publicly, yeah, okay, it's a, it's a man-made holiday. And I'm going to do it. Okay? At least, yeah. You know, when you got devils that can admit things when they're cornered, these so-called Christians, you know, why don't they admit something which they know? But it makes you feel good, right? It feels good, does it, right? Sure, if it feels good, well, we've always done it. It was, it, you know, it was a big part of our our tradition, man. As our family, we grew up. Oh, it's tradition. Then they get cute and go to. It's like uh, keep the traditions that we handed down to you. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot find me. One place in Scripture where, especially in the Pauline epistles, where it is authorized to celebrate the birth of Christ. Okay? You can get your little cute and your little Ruckmanites. 
garbage to try to justify yourself and make everybody feel good for uh, yoking themselves up with Rome, okay? You can deflect and uh, shaft and redirect all you want. You can't do it. You can't do it. <laughs> okay? All right? You can. Same with today. You can. You can. And even when you get idiots who say, well, we celebrate that Jesus. I, you know, how, how could you respond to that? How? How? <laughs> what, what would be the point? You got someone that deluded in the head trying to justify Halloween with the brilliant statement, well, we celebrate the death of Jesus, tying in the wages of sin of his death with the death, burial, and resurrection. <coughs> What, what do you do with that? What's the problem? First John 2, 15 on the 19. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And they say, they come up, we don't love the world. It's like these people who say, well, I'm not worshiping it. See, when someone says, I'm not, I don't fall down. On, hear what they say. Okay? The bale tree is a perfect example. Hear what they say. It's not like I'm falling down and worshiping it. Okay, you, 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 okay you're not going to hire Krishna to it, but okay. But see, what's the heart of worship? In the description box, the heart of worship. Okay? The heart of worship. Um, you can worship something without even taking a knee. You can worship something without even nodding your head. Yeah. Yeah. See, the mindset, that's justification. I'm not falling down. And, hear what they say. I'm not falling down and worshiping it. Okay, no, you're not. You're not, you know, Harry Krishna. And, no, you're not, but see. <laughs> what does this say about worship? In the description box. Very, very first video for you. So, well, I don't love the world. Then why are you causing strife and division? Why are you m making a big stink to do something that deep down in that little wretched thing you call a heart? That, um, come on. Come on, you know. But it feels good, doesn't it? Feels good, do it! For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, I want to, makes me feel good. And the lust of the eyes, look at how pretty it is. Look at those cool costumes and whatnot. And I, and I gotta say this. I do have to say this. If you ever heard of this, uh, what is it, not Costco, um, Costco's thing where, where grown-ups are dressing up in costumes before Halloween. Uh, some of them can be very creative and very like, wow, okay. But what is that? That's the lust of the eyes. That's why I'm against women wearing makeup. Okay? <laughs> what, 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 are you, what are you hiding what God made? Okay? Uh, okay, you might be an older woman. Okay, good for you. Uh, the beauty of the age is the gray head. Okay? You know, gray. All right? Anyway. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. The pride of life. I am delivered to do all these things. All things are lawful for me. They take that very thing and they hide behind Scripture. And it's an undeniable fact of Scripture. All things are lawful for you. But they hide behind it and they take pride in life by doing those things that are contrary to Scripture. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children. It is the last time. 
And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You know, there are some out there who say because there are saints out there who rightly refute and are utterly abhor Rome and all her holy days. I said it that way purposely. Okay, yes. Yes, the holy days are in scripture. The holidays is what Rome, but see, they elevate. See, that's another thing. When you take something that uh, Satan created and elevate it to the stature of a holy day and <laughs> trying to justify, whoa, dude. Whoa. Whoa. But your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Because of the merchandise of thy traffic, or the multitude of thy traffic. Merchandise. Hmm. You know, these Christian, these preacher guys, they need to make a living. Okay? Amen. I just find it very odious when these so-called Christians, especially here on YouTube, will have their shop things and selling things, especially when they take pot shots at others, like they make um, cups with a certain individual uh, thing on it, uh, attacking another individual. That, that, that's, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. But you see these Christian channels with their the shop thing and buy a coffee mug or a t-shirt. Okay? Like I said, there are some out there. It's like, dude, why don't you just at least be up, at least be up front? A little transparency. No, you don't do dirty laundry in public. No, you don't. Because you got guys like the bloke who will exploit you on that. But, I mean, a little transparency here, man. When you got an atheist like Dave Murphy, who will at least have the stones to publicly say, you're right, I don't want your Jesus. I don't want Jesus. I like my sin. When you have an atheist who has that kind of stones to at least admit the obvious, how come you Christians can't do that? Doesn't make it okay, but it'd be like, I'd have a lot more respect for some of you. I really would. I really would. I really would. You know, when I'm wrong and I'm shown wrong here, I, 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 there you go. Okay? Well, you know, if I'm wrong on something and a brother or a sister, Brad, Brad, come here. See this? Oh, boy. <laughs> Correct it, okay, and leave it up so you can see, okay, that I'm fallible, okay? But see, these guys, these guys, they have, you know, I remember uh, watching the thing that, uh, that was done on Jerk Hiles by the, by one guy. Um, and he's like, well, I, you know, my people need to trust me. I have a ministry to uphold. I have a ministry to uphold. Jerk Hiles had that mentality. He did so many things uh, behind the scenes and was exposed, but people loved him. Because he was an entertainer. If you ever heard of him... Uh, if you haven't heard of him, good, keep it that way. But if you've ever heard one of his so-called sermons, 45 minutes of him, you know, just basically like that, puffing up the crowd, fleshly, kind of like what Pete Ruckman was doing in the later years of his life, okay? All right, and um, they, uh, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Ruckman at least would read a few verses of Scripture, Jack Hiles would, uh, and I heard a sermon of his, supposedly, it's like, now close your Bibles and listen to me. He actually said that. Yeah. And that's a hero to sodomite Stephen Anderson, by the way. Jack, Jerk Hiles. Woo! <laughs> a 
okay? Yeah. But Jerkiles, he had, you know, his people had to trust him. People loved him. He had an image to uphold. He had a ministry to protect. And when he died, did his children get any of that fortune of his? No. It all went to Rome. <clears throat> Excuse me, to the ministry. His little thing there in Hammond, Indiana. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. And the same guys who justify sin say that us saints who expose it and seek to live according to what God has said, they say we are the ones that left them. Praise the Lord, I, I have nothing to do with Christianity. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When I left Christianity. <laughs> It's been a couple of years, you know, it, um, it was shown to me scripturally. Uh, with the, uh, the stone right past an, uh, before an avalanche, a dear sister who's waiting for us was the one who basically brought, like, got the thing rolling. And then when you search the scriptures, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what are we going to do with this? And see, you got to remember too, in John 4, 1 John 4, verses 5 and 6, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the Lord case as spirit of truth, and the Lord case as spirit of error. Right now, today. Right now, today. The Christians are going to have, I'm sure if I go out walk, I, I'm not going to because it will just infuriate me and I'll start a pro. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to stay here, okay? I'm not going to go out walking tonight, you know, for exercise like I normally do and also get tracking in. I'm not going to do that tonight because I'm just, you know, I don't need to be grieved and start problems because if I you know, go by the uh, German Catholic Church and see them out there in their cars handing out candy, trick-or-treating in a church parking lot, there you go, and over there at the Methodist, and then, you know, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It is. It's it's vomitous. It's odious, and saints ought not to have anything to do with it. You know, I I got notes here for a video about possession, and I got you know things written down here and um, things that you know I I I wanted to talk about, but. Um, and that will be addressed eventually, maybe. But I think you got the point. I think you got the point. So that's going to be it for this little video today. Not going to get into the thing that, that you know got the got the notes here for it. Um, I think the, I think I think you got the point. See, this is a day where evil is good. And good is evil. And there is a possibility that a lot of devil activity will transpire today. Of course there will, because it's glorifying the devil. But this, remember, this is not the big day, Satan. This is not the big day. Christianity will do that, tell you that today is his big day. No, this, no. Remember, Satan wants to be worshipped as God. And what pagan Roman Catholic holiday worships God the most? It's not today. So, that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you for watching this if you do. You know what, Christian? Who's going to call evil good and good evil?
I hope I offended you. I do. I really, I honestly really do hope I have offended you. Because you know what? Instead of sitting there being spoon-fed by somebody else who thinks they're better than you, why don't you sit your own butt down and take this, the authorized version of the scriptures, Lord, show me truth. You show me truth. That takes guts. You know why? Because when you do that, and you seriously do that, you know what the Lord's going to do? He's going to take that finger and he's going to put it on that one thing of yours. That hurts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, it hurts. That's why so many of you won't seek truth. So, thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you. And um, we will see you in the next video. Happy hunting.